So there's the design stage. So the analysis phase produces suggestions for the new system. Now the next stage is to create designs that fulfill those suggestions. And the important part of this is designing the inputs and outputs. And it's important to realize that you can be asked to design for computer or paper-based systems. So regardless whether it's for your inputs or outputs, paper or computer-based, we need to follow some rules. So the field sizes should be appropriate for the data. So you're not gonna make a tiny little box for someone to write a description of something because there wouldn't be enough room. Now the instructions or descriptions are clear. So if you've got a complex form to fill, you need to explain to a user how they're supposed to fill things in. If you think about a government form, it explains that you have to write in block capitals and in a black pen. So it's things like that. Now the labels need to be meaningful. You need to understand what each box actually needs to have inside it. And there's appropriate space in between fields. So the idea is that you don't have them all bunched up and we use the whole space. You don't just have a tiny um, input form on a page and then nothing else. So if you've got an on-screen input form, you may have a text box for normal text input, buttons to perform an action, radio buttons to select only one option, check boxes for more than one option, and drop-down menus to select options from a list. Now the idea is when you're creating an interface, if at all possible you can stop people from writing things, you should do it. Now what I mean by that is, if all of these different things here could be done by you typing. This one could be um, type OK to continue. This one could be typing your favourite food. This one could be typing um, something else. If you physically type all these in, you're prone to mistakes. People spell things wrong, people have typos, it'd be a nightmare. So if you can avoid people actually typing things in, obviously things like name, fair enough, they've got to write a name. But if you can avoid that where possible and stop people, you sort of make your system less likely to fail. One thing I always try and do is if I can use drop downs and if I can use um, radio buttons or just buttons in general, I try to, because it just means that it's less likely to break because they aren't typing in stupid things like you put enter name and you type in a number that could break a system, especially if it's the other way around. So if you can avoid that entirely, your input form is going to be a lot more robust. So here's some examples. So here's a written one where you've got to put your registration. So this would be um, one where you've got two, two and three perhaps. Um, to make sure you put it in the right format, it tells you the day, month and year so you know what format you need to write the date so it's registered and write the price in dollars. Now, um, this is quite a good uh, form as you only have two buttons, print record and next record, and it shows you with plenty of space all the different things you need to see. And this is an entry form in, uh, looks like access, where you've got appropriate drop downs and things like that and radio buttons. Now, the next thing you need to look at is validation and verification. Now, these are two separate things. Validation is an automated check to make sure data entered is sensible. So, for example, you know, if you've got something that's to do with pricing and you put minus 10, then that's stupid. Um, but it doesn't prevent people from typing data in incorrectly. As it says on the screen, I could type in uh, one cent instead of typing in 10 cents. Now, verification is sometimes automated and sometimes carried out by a person. So that's actually checking that the data entered is correct. Now, two verification techniques are double entry and screen checks. Now, there are more, but I'm just gonna cover these two for now. So, double entry is where data is entered twice. So if they don't match, then it essentially says, please enter it again, that's incorrect. So when you're entering passwords for a new account, it asks you to put them in twice. Uh, most of the time, it's an automated process. It doesn't ask you to check them, it just does it for you, which makes it more reliable. So it stops you from typing in things incorrectly. Now, screen check is where the data is entered and the user is asked to check after entry and confirm that data. So what it means by that is you might have like, I think quite often when I've applied for like jobs on an online, um, online application platform, you get like a big screen at the end that says, check all this information is correct and valid. And you go through, you check your names right, your passport numbers right, whatever it is. So this is a manual process, however, so it can be prone to errors because 
one thing when you do improve reading, especially if you've like written a book or an essay or something like that, and you check it yourself, you don't, I well, no, I don't, you don't check it properly. You're better off having somebody else check it. So if you're checking your own data entry, you can overlook things like, believe it or not, once I applied for a job and I'd accidentally made a typo, and when I was checking the thing, I didn't think, oh, I'm not going to spell my name wrong. And I actually put, um, instead of R-H-Y-S, R-H-Y-D. So I'd gone and said, oh, my name's Reed, when it's not. And uh, yeah, that was a bit silly of me. I should have checked that. Now, another thing we have is a check digit. Now, these are the ones I'm not going to cover in too much detail. So things like book ISBNs, what we do is there's a calculated number and Basically, if you take the code in wrong, it will work out the ISBN differently. So if your number you've typed in doesn't match the one on the barcode or the one on the product code, then it knows there's an error and you've typed something in wrong and there's been a mistake. So an example here is how it calculates it. So it looks at the positions and multiplies it by the number it sees and then gets that number. So if something's been incorrectly entered or it's been scanned wrong, then it knows that it's incorrect. So validation, this is where we check the values. So we've got things like a range check where we check that it's an acceptable value. So age must be greater than zero, but less than 150. You've got a lookup check. So this checks whether the data entered actually exists isn't it? and it's in the table. So you need to check for something like, if you type in senior manager, you need to check it's actually an option. A length check, so it might be, if you are typing in a date of birth and you type in 15 numbers, then that's obviously not your date of birth. Then you've got a character or type check, so to make sure it's um, the right data type, so a name wouldn't have numbers, but a height should only contain digits. Then you've got a format or picture check, which checks that a data is in a specified format. So you've got a date, which should be date, month, year maybe, um, something like that. Presence check, so that's make sure you're not leaving something blank. Consistency check, so it checks if fields tie up with each other. So if you type in Mr, then the gender should be male. That would make sense. And then a check digit, which is an extra digit added to a number which is calculated from the digits. So that's why I just spoke about that. So a common question in examination is name and describe the most appropriate validation check that could be applied to this field. So you've got things like, um, Range, 0 and 20, length, 8 carries exactly, data check, digitals only, um, and format 4 digits slash 4 digits. Now, file structures is a really important part of the design phase. So the fields used in these files need to take the following into account. So how long it is, the name of it, and the data type. So you plan these out at the beginning, and then we need to make sure that the follow through all the, all the way through the um, different stages. So, so product code maybe eight digits in length. It'd be alphanumeric, so it can have numbers and letters. And the validation for that is a length check. And then manufacturer year might be four. So two thousand and four could be an example of the data, which should be numeric. It should have a range check, so you can't have one that is in the future, perhaps, or have one that is in the 1700s or something like that. The idea is you plan out all your data types and all your fields, you plan how big they should be, what the type should be, and how we need to check them later on. Then when it comes to the actual phase where we're testing, we can go refer back to this and check it works properly. So hopefully that helped and you understood the design phase of the system lifecycle. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.